Hey guys, well, I'm just doing a quick video here on how you can get 120 volts out of a car alternator. So I've just hooked another car alternator to the homemade generator here. And what I'm using this alternator for is just for 120 volt. So this alternator here is actually out of a Chrysler Fifth Avenue. And it's one of the easiest alternators you can convert because you don't even have to take it apart. And it's a 75 amp alternator. And what I've done is I'm just using this for 120 volts right now. I'm just testing it out. I have all these homemade transformers on there and I'm not using the 12 volt output. So you can see here that there's not even a wire connected up. So I'm gonna fire it up and then I'm gonna talk about how it's done. So to keep the video interesting. Okay, so I have the RPMs up on the engine. It's better to run the engine actually at a higher RPM than just idle. So the engine's at, I'm not sure how many RPMs, let's say 2,000. And there we go, there's our voltage. The rheostat's turned down a little bit. And so we crank it up a bit, but it'll eventually probably burn out the bulb. Um, see what we can get, 140 volts out of the halogen. It's, not, it's okay, so. So the hair dryer's running, it's putting out some heat. Not very much, but. It does work, so about 300 hertz. Okay, so I have a 100 watt bulb, a 300 watt halogen, and voltage is 120 volts. So I've also plugged in a few other lights over there in the trees, so you can see there's a couple of fluorescent lights. Okay, so you can see here that the center wire here, so basically I've center tapped the three phase output on this alternator here and it's going up to the transformer to this one the round transformer and then also going to this other homemade transformer so you can see here that they're connected so this this one here this one here sharing this wire and then the, the input for this transformer is this white wire so that's the one on this side and then the one on this side this red one is going into here. So basically now we have two 120 volt outputs. So we have a 120 volt output off of this transformer and a 120 volt output off of this transformer. And the only reason we can do that is because we have a three phase output on this alternator here. I'll turn it on and there we go. So, so there's the 300 watt halogen and there's a hundred watt bulb so I've configured the transformers now differently so that I only have one receptacle now so we only have one 120 volt output and what I've done is I've just connected the transformers in series the the actual uh, secondaries and we can see now uh, how well it works so we'll turn this up and so we've got 120 volts and both bulbs are running. So we have 400 watts here. This alternator here does not have a built-in regulator. So it's really easy to convert this one. And you can see here, these two wires are for the field voltage. So they're supplying the current to the actual rotor inside to, the, to, to make our electromagnet on the rotor. And then we have our three wires coming out off of the stator and they're gonna go up to these transformers here. So you, you don't need the capacitor. Um, you can just use the battery uh, charger transformers and or you can, if you want a, a better transformer, you can rewire a microwave oven transformer. So you can take it apart and then reconfigure that. Probably work even better than what I have here. So with this alternator here, you have your 12 volt output. These two connectors are for the field. Now this alternator does not have a built-in regulator. So this is perfect for, for actually doing this. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just solder right to here, clean it up, and then we can solder three wires or you can wrap the wire through. So we'll have three wires coming off of here. Basically, these are the wires that come off of the stator. So if you look at a stator here, you have the three wires which you want to connect to. 
So it's very easy with this Chrysler alternator to actually do this because you don't even have to take the alternator apart. You have everything uh, ready to go. So if we have a GM alternator, basically we're just connecting to these three three phase output wires. So we'll have three wires coming out of the alternator and then we need to connect to the brushes. So we need a wire connected to here and to here. So you're going to have to put some crimp ends on and you're going to have to run two uh, field uh, wires out then for your uh, brushes to then put the 12 volts or whatever into your rotor here on the slip rings. So I'm going to make a little diagram and show you how to actually wire it. Now you can do this with uh, with any alternator. So in this diagram here, it's showing the use of two transformers and how they're wired to the stator. So we have our stator here. We're basically center tapping the stator. So we have a wire going to each primary coil. And then we also have the, the two other stator wires that go individually to the primary. So you can see here, this is how this one's wired. And then our secondary coil is connected to the receptacles. So we have two receptacles with this setup. And you can see uh, the field wire, you connect one to ground and one will go to the variable resistor, uh, the rheostat. You can also put a switch on there and then that goes to positive. So that's pretty simple. And I'll show you another way of wiring it. So now in this diagram here, we have the same setup for the primary, but the secondary is in series. Now, if you don't have two identical transformers, then the output voltage or wattage will only be equal to the weakest transformer. So in this design here, we're only using one transformer, so we're not using the maximum output of the alternator, but it's really easy to connect. So I have two battery charger transformers here. Now, when you're using them in a battery charger, this would be the secondary coil, this would be the primary, because this one's the 120 volt uh, side of the transformer. Uh, just like this one here, and then this is the 12 volt output. So we have our primary secondary, so, but we're using this now in reverse. So we're using this as a step up transformer now. So this is gonna be the primary now. So this is gonna be where we put our output voltage from the stator into, and then we're gonna have our 120 volt output put here. Oh, this center here, tap basically on the stator here, the three phase uh, stator is going to both the transformers. So you can see this wire here going down to this transformer. And then also it goes over to this transformer. So you can see here. And then we have the wire here from this transformer goes over to this side. And then same thing, this output goes over to this side of the transformer. So you can see that how basically you're wiring the two transformers uh, to the, the state. So you're gonna have to hook up a rheostat or a variable resistor to the field contacts on the alternator. And so what that's gonna do is that can control the actual field voltage. So instead of just putting a direct 12 volts into it, uh, then you can, you can actually adjust it a little bit so you can then fine tune your voltage, output voltage. Because if you're gonna just use uh, engine RPM, you'd have to uh, be able to maintain the RPM. And then once you put a load on it, the RPM is gonna drop. So then you need to be able to adjust that. So that's what you need the rheostat for. Have one here. And this is just out of a car. It's for dimming the lights, uh, dashboard lights or whatever. Also, you're gonna wanna switch. The switch is gonna be so that you can then switch the field uh, on and off. So if you forget to turn this off, then you won't drain the battery. So I've just put the transformers in this box here. They're wired up and all you have to do is switch it on here and then dial up your voltage you want. This thing's sticking okay. We'll lower it down a bit. So this 125 volts and then we can just plug in the light and there's a light over here. There. So there's our halogen 300 watt. So I have 100 watt incandescent halogen. So that was just one way of, of getting 120 volts from a car alternator. 
So I'm going to say a little word of caution here. I don't recommend anyone actually doing this because you are playing around with high voltages. Once you start stepping up the AC current out of the alternator to 120 volts or 200 volts, you, you could fry yourself. You can buy generators for 100 bucks that'll put out even more wattage. So be very careful. This is just for educational purposes and it's just a demonstration on how you can do it. So thank you for watching.